Katubi Westlanders, welcome back to the Lost Holotapes channel, where we delve into the lore of the Fallout universe. Today we will finally conclude our discussion on the much troubled Fallout New California, examining events that occur between 2256 and 2261, including those that unfolded in the mod's gameplay. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe and let's get straight to the point. In 2256, at the age of 13, a new bishop, the son of the Chosen One from Arroyo, comes to power in New Reno. After 2256, the NCR undertakes another foolish colonization mission, sending settlers in a small group to the Baja Peninsula. This led to the creation of a small settlement with a few shacks and a well, named Rattletail. By October the 1st of 2258, Albert Christensen, a very melancholic old man with cancer, takes over as overseer of Vault 18. He is deeply concerned about the vault's future, given that he is 75 years old and the average life expectancy is 103. Since the 23rd century, the vault's population has significantly decreased due to the exodus of the Exodites and the lack of reproduction among the remaining residents. Currently only 300 people live there, with 250 being elderly. Of the remaining 50, 30 are members of the Patriots team. Ideally, the remaining 20 people should be non-elderly, but Fallout New California messed up here. Oh, you underestimate my madness. I intentionally conducted a census of the Vols population, and firstly, they should have been about 50 Patriots, and secondly, the remaining non enderly should also be around 100. I understand that lore is often written haphazardly in the process, but for heaven's sake, can you show some respect for a player and even minimally cross-reference data with the list of introduced characters? In late October, the scouts resume expeditions. Dusting off their jumpsuits and combing their grain beards, the scouts, led by Kevin Rossman, embark on expedition number 218. Rossman finds Ben Kurtz in the Californian tribe and takes him along. Perhaps he was intrigued by Ben's flashbacks, expressed through the drawing of comics, whose plots unwittingly reflected Ben's life before the tribe. On January the 2nd of 2259, the scouts undertake expedition number 219, during which they help the Californian tribe fend off an attack by the Black Vultures. On May 14th, the scouts outpost Black Bear Lodge was destroyed by Night King, who wandered onto the mountain with a rocket launcher. Before 2260, Vault 5 opens, Raider metalheads under the leadership of Terror Max emerge. They find a bunch of discarded ships on the ocean shore, quickly repair them, launch them into the water, and from then on, they raid the coast, causing incredible headaches for the NCR, which lacks its own fleet. Of course, Terror Max flotilla couldn't live without music anymore, so they started their own radio station, with Terror Max himself as the host. According to the promotional map of Fallout New California, the Terror Max flotilla establishes a land base on Santa Catalina Island, which I consider a genius decision. Pirates, in any case, need their own harbor, and the proximity of the island to the thriving boneyard makes it ideal for launching good or Norse raids. The NCR establishes the settlement of Santa Monica on the site of the previous city of the same name. In the city of Hub, the Mojave Express Postal Courier Service is founded. In various regions, the postal service has its branches, such as in Union City. Also in Union City, Ship Bank establishes its branch. In Reading, a Mafia clan and plasma weapon manufacturer called the Van Graves is founded. By 2260, they already had enough influence for the NCR to take them into account, rather than the other way around. The energy weapons manufacturing company Ultra Bright is founded in Tucson. The Dirty Dave gang arrives in Tucson and wreaks havoc in a lethal brothel, taking the love prizes as a trophy. Ghoul Raul Tejari is determined to punish the scoundrels. He tracks and destroys them. Unfortunately, the girl also dies. After the incident, Raul moves to the Mojave. The Uxaka tribe finally perishes due to poisoned water. Its infected residents scatter throughout the wasteland. The Arizona Rangers, also known as Desert Rangers, are slowly pushed out of Arizona by Caesar's Legion and begin looking west towards California and the Mojave. They start collaborating with the NCR in the conflict with the Raider Alliance. It is known that in New Mexico, apparently on the border with the Sonora Wasteland, there was a Ranger camp that was destroyed by the Legion. The Leonidas squadron based in Athens among the Raiders felt that the Raiders would betray them, so they planted a bomb in the mines for intimidation, just in case. However, the raiders managed to dismantle the bomb into parts and scatter it in the mines. As a result of the Rudation release, the Necronation ghouls went feral and dwell left on the lower levels, occasionally reaching the voiceless and attacking them. The remnants of the Necronation were expelled from the Alliance because their unstable condition posed a threat to everyone. Expelled from the Alliance, they settled in a cave north of Athens, called Under Mountain, where they completely died out by 2260, with the last member of the group going feral. The Enclave already had contacts with the Super Mutants of Father before this, so they partially relocated for Dagger Point launch platform. 
Perhaps the fact that Chev and John themselves were in some sense super mutants contributed to this. Enclave needed for dagger points so that during the expected evacuation to the east, they could leave a farewell gift to the NCR by destroying half with a nuclear charge. The Enclave had its own small outpost in Pinehaven, but the Enclave members stationed there deserted, disguising themselves as settlers and heading to Union City. By 2260, a gang forms in the city of Barstow, known as the Barstow Gang. It's strange that the Alliance uh, doesn't invite them to join their faction. In addition to the Black Horse Range, the Alliance establishes outposts and camps at Big Bear Lake, South Range, Mission Mall, Raider Trailer Park, Military Training Camp, I-15 at the intersection of the overpasses and a camp near Vault 18. The Vultures establish their personal camp in the Senior High School in Athens and in the Raider Trailer Park in Mission Hills. The population of the Raiders Alliance reaches 1000 people. Someday we will outnumber them, I hope. Among the slaves of the Raider Alliance, there were at least two uprisings. Firstly, super mutants captured 50 years ago tried to return to the surface, but their attempt failed. Most likely, the rebellion occurred much closer to the date of the super mutants attack on Athens. Secondly, some of the voiceless staged a successful rebellion. They escaped from Athens and founded a village called Ur Town. Unfortunately, they faced a survival problem. They simply didn't know how to do it. Instead of water from the well, they fetched mud. The crops failed and, to feed themselves, they attacked travelers and cannibalized on them. After a month, some of the voiceless wanted to return and the Alliance was ready to accept them on the condition that they would kill all the remaining renegades in the village, which they did. Even though members of a faction called the Fire Worshippers are encountered in Fallout New California living in a camp called Sandbar, they are not mentioned in the lore. Apparently, all lore related to them was cut and their role in the game was reduced to road bandits. So we will ignore the existence of this faction since there is no lore about them. Also to avoid unnecessary complication, we will remove the camp of road bandits at the dagger point checkpoint from the narrative. I don't want to invent a logical explanation for how the super mutants were always failing to notice them when they were leaving the fort. By 2260, the Botnicks disappeared from the roster of the Raider Alliance. They were supposed to appear in the game, characters and an outpost were in the concepts, but apparently they, just like the Fire Worshippers, were decided to be cut out. As part of the promotional materials for Fallout New California, a large intel map of the NCR was developed, shedding light on the situation on the regions by August 2260. I have already partially used its lore in this story, but I cannot ignore the fact that Fallout New California continues to disgrace itself. The mess on this map perfectly symbolizes the disaster in delivering lore in Fallout New California and once again confirms the argument that even original lore constantly needs a polishing when one's attempting to retell a cohesive story. So, Vault 18 was destroyed not in August 2260, but in November. By the lore of Fallout New California itself, the Tibet's prison is introduced as a facility within NCR borders, not somewhere in New Mexico. Max and Bunker should not exist because there is no new Brotherhood cell in Arizona, and its founder became boss Maxon of the Cajon Pass Raiders. Fort Arodesh had not yet been founded, and, and, and what it is doing so deep in Legion territory? Boulder Dome could not be an active and serial location since the Ansar hadn't even reached Vegas yet. The mod's lore forces the idea that by November 2260, the NCR has no intel data on New Vegas, but settlements in its vicinity are shown on the map of the NCR. Moreover, Jacobstown was only founded 19 years later after the events of the mod. In 2260, the NCR is torn apart by crisis. There is a political crisis where various influential political groups and corporations, including Shady Sands banks, Hub Caravans, Mojave criminal syndicates and Urino Mafia families, clash over what to do with the country. This political crisis leads to an economic crisis. The rapid expansion of territories and the appetites of influential groups exceed the funds flowing into the treasury. As a result, maintaining these territories, the army and the administration suffer, leading to a social crisis with poverty, high taxes and the government's poor treatment of its citizens, tribes and other independent settlements and factions that find themselves within the NCR's grasp. Meanwhile, the population of the NCR reaches 1 million. On May 22nd of 2260, a law is enacted in the NCR that firstly establishes the death penalty for violence, murder, slave trading and treason, and secondly prohibits vigilantism and the formation of militias. Any form of punishment must be controlled by the state, including through the licensing and control of bounty hunter activities. The settlement of humans and super mutants, Broken Hills, becomes extinct due to the depletion of the mine after August 2260, as according to the promotional map of Fallout New California, the settlement was still active at that time. Meanwhile, the Legion is moving towards Tucson. On their way, they crucify the Tucson Raiders on Interstate 8. Kevin and Jima and many others in the Raider Alliance are not very pleased with Elzrogon's rule and would like to see him removed. Like other family members of rebellious subordinates, 
Juan holds Kiev's daughter hostage, and Kiev, along with her clan, is sent to watch over the Europedis power station, which is of interest to raiders as an energy source. Though it is Union City which utilizes the energy from the station, but I guess, comparing to other oversights, it is minor. Time to talk about gameplay lore. November 23rd of 2260, the day in Vault 18 begins with the Vault Ball match between the Patriots and the Barbarians teams. Starkey, the protagonist, plays for the Patriots, and Johnny Matheson, the hated bully, breaks his leg. For Bragg, a broken leg is not an excuse, so he kicks Starkid out of the team. To Dr. Rossman's surprise, Starkid's leg heals within a day, but since Rossman is not a doctor of medical sciences, he doesn't pay too much attention to it. In reality, Starkid's incredible regeneration is a mutation, and he is actually a partially super mutant. In the evening of the same day, the election of a new overseer takes place. There are two main candidates, the incumbent overseer Albert Christensen and John Bragg. Albert wins the vote. At night, John Bragg goes to Plan B and initiates the takeover of the vault. He dresses his football team, the Patriots, in enclave uniforms made from the vault jumpsuits. The Patriots, essentially cultivated by Bragg, have been following him without a doubt for the past few years. The takeover of the vault begins with the mining of residential sectors. On the same day, in the Marina del Rey area in Santa Monica, Terramax pirates carry out a raid, killing five NCR citizens. Among other news, on the same day, Wendell Patterson announces that he will take over the Hoover Dam before December. Yeah, sure. November 24th, morning, an explosion occurs in the residential sectors of Vault 18. Starkey's brothers and sister are among the first victims of this madness. The Patriots gather surviving civilians and execute them in the sports hall. Some of the survivors, mainly security officers, manage to resist. A fierce battle takes place in the vault. The Overseer realizing that the generators are damaged to the point when reading the Fixing Things magazine won't help, initiates the vault's self-destruct sequence, then prematurely leaves the building. Meanwhile, Squadron Leonidas begins to evacuate to the east, to Washington, to reunite with the organization based at Raven Rock. They start packing their weapons, equipment and vehicles, but they need to wait for Bragg to capture Vault 18 and activate the missiles at Fort Dagger Point. Eldragon and Nas didn't want to wait for them and took advantage of the Enclave's loss of vigilance to stab them in the back. They slaughtered all the Enclave members in Athens, then seized their vertebrates, weapons and equipment. Only a small squad remains at Fort Dagger Point. Although the Wasteland Scouts veterans died in Vault 18, Star Kid and several young guys he helped evacuate from the vault were formally accepted into the Scouts by Diane Rossman, so the faction continues to exist. Among the young survivors were the protagonist Star Kid, Eric and Jamie Campbell, Jen Hale, Kira Mann, Johnny Matheson and Ben Kurtz. I know I criticize Flight in California a lot, but I must admit I'm impressed that the developers invested time in companion characters and even attempted to create some chemistry between them resulting in their interactions with each other. Each of them has something in their past. Jen, whose life goal was envisioned as a mere brood mother, was raised in comfort. Kira delved into a fruitless search of clues about her parents, felt disgust towards simple Jen. Johnny Matheson, the universally hated bully, was drowning his loneliness in drugs. Eric and Jamie, in their late 20s, stuck between two generations and having no connection with either the Zoomers or the older residents, and Ben Kurtz, too self-isolated to engage in socialization. The chemistry between the characters, as well as balancing their roles with the protagonist, is precisely what is needed for a great story, so that the narrative doesn't come down to the simplest paradigm of a superhero arrived and saved everyone single-handedly, the end. It's just a pity that the developers eventually gave up on the characters and they returned to their role of furniture. Managing to eliminate the Patriots and seemingly killing the Bragg's, the handful of survivors reaches the vault doors, behind which an actual enclave squad with plasma guns and power armor awaits them. Of the entire handful, only the scouts make it out of the cave alive. However, upon exiting the cave, they discover that raiders led by Jonathan Nas attack the Enclave squad stationed outside. Amidst the battle between the raiders and the Enclave, the scouts manage to escape far enough from the vault not to be caught by blast wave and radiation. The survivalist camp is destroyed, but Jonathan and his squad manage to take valuable vertebrates out of the blast zone. Having stopped for the night in the ruined Black Bear Lodge, the group is attacked by raiders on the morning of November 25th. These raiders were searching for Rossman, as their captain had a personal vendetta after his brother died in the mines when Rossman blew them up about 10 years ago. After successfully repelling the attack, the scouts flee towards Union City, hoping to find help from the NCR. However, on the way they end up assisting the NCR themselves, as a battalion and caravan have fallen into an ambush at the intersection of Route 15 and 138, where raiders established an outpost called I-15. Despite significant losses of almost 100 people, the NCR and the scouts managed to defeat the raiders and reach Union City. Nos also died in the battle at I-15. 
However, the raiders weren't ready to give up so easily. After capturing vertebrates and in a bloodthirsty frenzy from the battles, they attacked Union using bombardment and booby-trapped slaves. As a result of the attack, Union's power and water sources were damaged. Simultaneously, the Vikings raided the NCR caravan that was traveling from the Bondyard to Union. Since the territory was under NCR jurisdiction, an investigation was organized and the tunnel leading beyond the map to the west was sealed. Plotnik California offers different paths and the player can choose to side with the NCR, Raiders, Enclave or Super Mutants. For our story, we will traditionally choose joining the NCR, as it is the most karmically positive option, and also because other options open up inconsistencies with logic and canon in the future. Despite the fact that the scouts saved the NCR squad and defended Union during the siege, General Silverman began to blackmail them with arrest and trial for their connection to Dr. Rossman, allegedly for colluding with the recognized terrorists in the NCR. He forces them to work for him, carrying out military tasks that the corrupt NCR parliament prohibits the army from doing. Generally, the scouts become his mercenaries. At that time, Senator Paul Deville, who works for the bishops, was in Union. His task was to prevent the resumption of active NCR operations against raiders and politically eliminate Silverman. He supervised the issue of the Raider Alliance survival, because Nerino and Van Graafs were selling weapons to them and didn't want to lose customers. The scouts set out to repair the Europedis power station, where they meet Kieva, defending herself and her clan from a crowd of mind virus infected savages. The scouts negotiate with Kieva about overthrowing Elzergon from within the Raider Alliance. This was an option that could lead to a power shift in the region and would allow avoiding a bloody massacre between the NCR, Raiders and all the other living beings in the region. As the first act of the covert rebellion, Kieva was required to hand over a hostage for some reason, probably to restore herself in Athens. While Kieva demanded a captured NCR captain, they agreed on a desert ranger. Meanwhile, the sand crawler of NCR colonists is going somewhere to the east across the Cajon territory for some reason. They hit the mine laid by the vultures and lose their threads. The vultures attack the crawler from an ambush and wipe out its passengers and escorts. This crawler was not unique. The NCR builds such ones in hub and uses them in expedition across the Dune Sea. The Black Vultures also attack the ship bank branch in Union and rob it, as if it was Coffeeville in 1892. The scouts chasing the raiders take down their camp, Mission Hills Trailer Park. In terms of gameplay mechanics, a player can open a savings account, deposit caps and earn interest, but unfortunately, when I did so, all my caps disappear from the account after some time. 10 Brahmins out of 10 for realism. The Barstow gang, hired to guard the NCR caravan, ransacks the caravan itself, provoking the NCR to respond, which ended up with the scouts hunting down the gang. The land detachment of Terror Max fleet attacks the NCR caravan in Cajon Pass, though it's unclear what they were even doing so far from the coast. Introducing a purely expositional faction into gameplay just for the sake of having them is a very bad idea, so we will pretend this never happened. The NCR, with the help of the scouts, restores the water purification system in Vault 52 for Union and NCR plans an expedition to Fort Dagger Point. Silverman hires Anai Oren, who has been traveling here and there all this time, working as a licensed bounty hunter and periodically creating and eliminating her clones. Having the keycard to Fort Dagger Point, Anai accompanies the scouts' caravan and the NCR military detachment. The group enters Fort Dagger Point and, after going deep into the base, falls into an ambush. I don't understand what for, but developers introduced a nonsensical idea of certain high-ranking NCR officials selling Starkid to the Super Mutants and luring him into a trap with this expedition. You can't just throw this concept in without any further development if you don't intend to load and shoot this Chekhov's gun. Anyway, while talking to the lieutenant of the attacking Super Mutants, Starkid learns that he himself is a Super Mutant in human form, derived from the Vault Dweller's blood sample. Taking advantage of the diversion created by Anai, the group manages to escape. The Brahmins of the caravan were so stunned by the stupidity of the idea of a secret conspiracy between the NCR and the Super Mutants that they didn't lag behind and also successfully escaped from the base. But the Super Mutants did not stop their pursuit only in the internal corridors of the base. They continued to chase the group further, flooding the valley and attacking everyone on their path. In particular, they wipe out raiders in a military training camp and capture it. In Union City, there is an assassination attempt on Silverman, organized by Deville with his patrons, the bishops. However, the scouts saved their employer by eliminating the corrupt senator. Seeing that super mutants began to fill the region, Els Dragon orders the raiders to leave Mission Mall and relocate to Black Horse Range. Infiltrating Athens and securing support from the now respected Kieva, the scouts convinced the other leaders of the alliance to stand against Els Dragon. However, the claims to the throne had to be resolved by a one on one duel, as becoming a Jarl couldn't be that simple. Sarkid wins the duel. Els Dragon is killed and his rule comes to an end. 
Starkid, the new leader of the raiders with Kieva's support, sends all his new subordinates to defend outposts from super mutants. The developers had an idea to introduce a mechanic that would allow the player to decide which outpost to send raiders to, but it was apparently abandoned. Nevertheless, there is a dialogue with Kieva, who demands to send raiders to defend Athens, Black Bear Lake and Black Horse Range, because the first outpost provides the alliance with food and water, and the second is the main residential sector, the loss of which would break the backbone of the faction. Epic battles take place at these locations, as well as at South Range, Raider Trailer Park and Senior High School in Athens. Since formally assigning squads is equivalent to victory and not assigning is a defeat, South Range, Trailer Park and Senior High School perish. Besides, a super mutant behemoth attacked Senior High School, so there was no way around it. I had a persistent idea to conduct a battle simulation to see who would win without player intervention, but I guess I'm overthinking it and I need to calm down. Super mutants also attacked the California tribe, but they managed to withstand the siege. After raiders managed to repel the super mutants' attack, the NCR raiders and Diablo tribe consolidated forces to storm the fort. On the way, they clear the super mutants from the training camp. In a multi stage assault, the scouts managed to reach the depths of the fort and confront the super mutant father. The father was like, Courier, I'm your father. And Kiraman was like, No! After dealing with the father, the Wasteland scouts reached the nuclear warhead launch site, where they killed the Braggs again. The scouts throw the bodies of John and Chevy into the rocket shaft before they regenerate, and Anai Oren jumps in afterward, wishing to burn herself with the parasite and end her suffering and wanderings. The scouts destroy Fort Dagger Point along with Unity and the Leonidas Squadron. With this, the gameplay part of Fallout New California mod ends. The war in Cajon Pass began this simmer in the NCR political establishment. They were still interested in advancing north towards Vegas, and after all these events, the political elite supported the strengthening of the military contingent in this area. Despite helping in the battle against super mutants, the NCR did not grant amnesty to raiders and squeezed them out of Cajon Pass. They had to leave the region, heading through the Dune Sea to Sonora. Perhaps not everyone survived this relocation, and the handful of raiders who came to Caesar for kneeling were assimilated. The Vipers probably parted ways somewhere along the way and made it to the Mojave. The Voiceless most likely were pulled out of the mines, granted citizenship and began to be used for propaganda purposes, justifying the need for further expansion to protect the oppressed from the Rampart raiders. Although General Silverman became a hero in the War for Cajon Pass, his numerous enemies in political circles found a way to eliminate him by sending him on a small reconnaissance expedition into the frontier wasteland on June 4th of 2261. This lore snippet from Fallout Frontier indirectly confirms the ending we chose for Fallout New California. With the territory cleared and locations explored, the NCR likely discovered and destroyed the Vance cannibal family. It can also be assumed that Odyssey is standing on the road leading to Vegas joined the NCR. Advancing south, the Legion captured Tucson and renamed it into Tucson. The region also created two more settlements, Oracle in Oro Valley and Ironburg Graveyard on the Davis Mountain Air Force Base. The Ultra Bright Company apparently was disbanded. Additionally, the Legion captures Vault 47 in Sahuarita. According to the lore of Latin California, they were supposed to do this before 2260, but this contradicts the fact that the Legion had not yet reached Tucson from the north by 2260, and Sahuarita is even further south of Tucson. The California tribe also could not hold on in Cajon Pass and was forced to go to Sonora, along with Ben Kurtz, who joined them. Not only did Ben Kurtz leave the scouts, they in general disband, as their joint venture is over. It's quite cool that the developers brought the characters back to the Mojave Wasteland rather than writing them out of the narrative immediately after Fort Dagger Point siege. The origin of Fallout New Vegas will begin after the completion of Fallout New California, but our former companions will appear in the Mojave Wasteland. In 2281, they will all live in the Mojave. Hero will work for the Van Graffs, Johnny will squander caps on the strip, Eric and Jamie will live in North Vegas, and Jen will settle in Good Springs, raising babies just as she was destined. Also, the Legion will forcibly deliver Ben Kurtz with a collar after the defeat of the California tribe, but we will get back to that later. Starkid will become the courier in the NCR. In fact, Starkid becoming the courier freely working on the NCR territory is the most solid argument in favor of the NCR path being the closest to canon. And with this, we will conclude the analysis of the lore of Fallout New California. Despite a plethora of errors in dates and facts, the mod has made a tremendous contribution to the development of Fallout's historical lore. I try to be forgiven because rating such projects out of sheer enthusiasm and without a professional team and outside financial support is a pure fun love, worthy of respect. 
Of course, more accuracy and the realization of all the potential concepts would be desirable. I can't even imagine how great the game could be if the authors led a design document with dates and double-checked all the dialogues and notes before release, if Vance's Odyssey and Angel's Breakers were given some narrative or expositional lore, if the development of companion characters did not stop at the moment of their arrival in Union City, if the Vikings, Vultures, Vipers and Psychos played some role in the storyline like Nanjima, rather than being background extras. But fun mods exist in the reality of either this way or not at all, and therefore thanks at least for what we have. With all the polishes of the story, I believe that the narrative turned out to be worthy. If you think the same, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. All tapes also thrive on great love and enthusiasm, and by these simple actions you help support it a lot. Well, that's all for today. Check your family tree, maybe you're a super mutant too? In any case, we will meet again in the Wastelands Wanderers, end of the holiday.